Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cloud on Air, live webinar series from Google Cloud. Uh, we're hosting a live webinar series every Tuesday, so you can uh, check the agenda and see a topic that's useful for you and join. Uh, my name is Sandy Jones, and today I'm going to be walking you through engaging meetings, making them easy, accessible, and everywhere. Uh, throughout the session, you can actually ask questions using the platform below. We've got some people uh, ready and waiting to answer your questions. And at the very end, I'm going to choose a few to just do in a Q&A session and answer live. So uh, let's get started. Uh, like I said, I want to talk to you today about meeting experiences. And you know, at Google, video conferencing is a crucial tool for how we do business. If you walk the halls in Google, you'll see every meeting room, no matter how small or large, there's faces in the room, but also faces on the screen. And we produce, uh, I think, 10 years of video conference every single day. And it's become a valuable tool because it's allowed us to build our culture, be more agile and more collaborative. Uh, and so that's what I really want to talk about today. And uh, you know, it really begins with this changing enterprise. And I don't think that's any revelation that enterprises are always constantly under an evolution. But uh, I think the current evolution that we're in really started back in the 90s and started with the desktop computer. When the price point hit such a, a level and the memory and processing power hit a level, suddenly every desktop was enabled with a computer. It really skyrocketed the productivity of individual user, empowered our knowledge workers to really work on their own to an incredible capacity. Jump forward about 10 years with the rise of the internet, and we saw a new trend starting to take over and, and drive that evolution within the enterprise. And that was really two pieces, actually. It's the rise of the cloud computing within the internet, applications that were just served up over the internet, taking advantage of that distribution mechanism, and the rise of mobile devices, a supercomputer in your pocket. So suddenly, everybody had a computer in their pocket. They were networked together to applications. And that effect really has accelerated the productivity today of, of, of anyway the organizations that have embraced these types of transformations. Uh, and we've seen the impact that this second digital transformation has had on the industry. If you look at the S&P 500, it's kind of an indicator of, of uh, churn within business. It used to be that once you made the S&P 500, like in the 50s, you'd stay on there for upwards of 60 years. Not a lot of change there because companies, it took so much work to get there. Fast forward to Modern times, in 2011, that was cut down to 18 years. Even today, we've seen in a matter of weeks, companies can be in and out of that S&P 500. And it's because of their ability to kind of shed a lot of the things you needed to build up over time in the past. And so when you look at how long it took to get to 50 million users for the telephone, that was a 75-year span, mainly because you had to build infrastructure, make the various telephone companies play nice together, and really get to that point where it was accessible to 50 million users. You see there's a demarcation point there in the middle, cloud innovation. Really, that's where we've been able to shed a lot of that infrastructure. And it's seen the rise of these applications that hit the 50 million user mark in almost what appears like no time at all. Spotify made it in eight years, Netflix in seven, Twitter took that down to months. And more recently, Pokemon Go hit that target in 19, 19 days. So a real uh, increase or acceleration in the churn within businesses. And really what that meant is that organizations now need to think differently. They need to embrace this digital disruption that's happening. And so they're turning to companies like Google, the digital natives that have built tools that were purposely meant for the cloud. And so we're working with some of the, uh, the top companies on the Ford Cloud 100 list and bringing these tool sets to them. And you may be familiar with uh, some of the companies here. A lot of them maybe even predated that telephone technology I was talking about. Uh, Colgate Palmolive is a great example of a company on the S&P 500 that's been able to go through this digital transformation with us. It's impacted their culture, changed the way they work remotely, given them access to recruit and retain talent that's more used to working in this digital world. And really, more importantly, it's increased the level of collaboration within their organization. And they've done that, like I said, by embracing the tools in the G Suite set. And there's kind of four main areas uh, within there. Creative tools that empower your knowledge workers to create and share content. Connection tools that bring your company together like video conferencing or email and uh, chat. And then access tools that turn a Google search into a search of your entire uh, enterprise corpus and allow you to surface materials that you maybe would never find in the past. Lastly, that all needs to be managed and controlled in a secure way by our IT team, and we've given the cloud tools to do that. But today, I want to focus in on, on two key elements, one in the Create side and one in the, the Connect side, and that's the Jamboard and Google Hangouts Meet. So the Jamboard, you can see my uh, partner in crime here behind me, that's a digital whiteboard that's really bringing the, the whiteboard experience into the, uh, the digital age. And then Hangouts Meet, a video conferencing tool that really turns any endpoint, a phone or a browser, into a video conferencing tool. And you know uh, the impact that it has is incredible when we turn, just sort of focus on 
the transformation within your meeting rooms. And it's, it's actually two pieces, technological and cultural. And I think that second one often gets missed. Companies look at the technology investment uh, and forget to see that there's also a cultural impact. And so it's not just about swapping out the tech in order to provide this better experience. You need to transform the culture of your business. And the two go very hand in hand. Uh, what you end up with is a, a more engaged community of users. Uh, they communicate more. They become highly more productive and collaborative. And that results in an agile business that can change based on market or competitive forces that they're always kind of trying to adapt to. And so to make up this toolkit, like I said, there's kind of the, the Jamboard and the Hangouts Meet I want to talk about. There. But there's actually two elements to each of those, the software side and the hardware side. The software side first, we'll talk about Hangouts Meet. That takes advantage of that cloud computing to deliver a, uh, a high quality video conference experience from really anywhere in the world. Of course, in the boardroom, we want a little bit more of a, a professional enterprise grade video conference. And so we've come out with the, the Meet Hardware Kit, which just maximizes the experience inside of your, in, uh, your business infrastructure. Now, we felt that the, the whiteboard was a critical piece of the ideation process in business in the past, but it kind of failed to move into the future. So we brought it there. That's what the Jamboard is, a digital whiteboard that connects users just together via the, the board itself or via a series of applications that enable you to create and ideate from anywhere that you are. Now, the result of implementing these tools is kind of fourfold, and I want to talk about each one a little bit separately. I've harped on the culture of collaboration. We're going to talk about why that's so critical to really focus in on creating a face-to-face -face experience and some of the benefits that you get from that. I also want to talk about productivity everywhere, making your users uh, productive no matter where they are in the world or what they're doing or what time of day. Next, we'll take a look at building consensus, driving your organization in the same direction and driving them towards creative solutions in the uh, less debate, more create section. And then lastly, I want to talk about the enterprise grade nature of this, the quality of the tools themselves, and your ability to manage it as an IT organization. Let's start with the culture of collaboration. Um, let's be honest, people really do not like going to meetings. Uh, if you've been on any meeting that was just a conference bridge, you look around the table, everybody's multitasking. We found that up to 60% of people are actually multitasking in a tr traditional conference bridge. Uh, and and you know, it's just not a, a productive time in terms of the meeting itself. Workers find they have too many meetings, and half of those they've, uh, they've identified as wasteful. And the fact is, there's just going to be more meetings. This isn't going away. There isn't more meetings in there, or less meetings than there was yesterday. There's more. And so as our time gets consumed more, more meetings, we need to make these more productive. And so Google approached this as a whole new meeting experience. We wanted video conference to be the always thing you did. There is no reason to not turn on that camera and engage in an interpersonal way. So we created Hangout Meet, uh, and it's, uh, you know, we, we rebuilt it from the ground up. We improved the media quality, so the audio and video is much higher than what you saw in the initial Hangouts. We made it easy to record and share the content using Drive integrations. We've increased the size of the attendees up to 50 participants, and we're going to continue to push that boundary in the future, and provided tools like in-meeting context and chat integration so that that in-room experience is as good as when you're uh, remote. And really what this has done is allow you to focus on the meeting. And so it's brought people back into the meeting. Instead of multitasking and uh, you know, doing other things, you have presence. People have to be a part of that meeting. There's a social contract built into being face-to-face. Not only that, I'm getting a lot more information via body language and even be able to kind of cross language barriers almost because I'm able to see the emotions and the, the, uh, kind of the face reactions of the people involved. But actually, the, the most important impact is one that we actually discovered through a lot of research. So Google spent a lot of time figuring out what makes a team successful. And actually, you, you might see a, a hyperlink there. If you Google rework and Google, you'll come across a series of studies that we did just trying to improve our organization. We've shared that out. Uh, to the rest of the world. And, and one study in particular, like I said, was focused on making successful teams. And what we found time and again was it wasn't having common goals or having strong leadership or clear tasks defined with timelines. It was something called psychological safety. That's what made a team successful. And what we mean by that is the ability to feel safe in sharing your ideas, taking risks, and really working as a team. That's something that's built into a video conference culture. And it can't be a culture that meets on video conference once a week for that uh, weekly meeting. It's a company that meets all the time on video conference, that uses video conference as the go-to way to communicate when you're not in the same room, and creates an experience like you're in the same room no matter where you are. And so I, I think that's something to really highlight. There's 
subtle psychological benefits and social benefits that come out of this that really make this an impactful cultural transformation. And with all of those, you begin to grasp the idea of business in real time. And this is something, again, that kind of came with the rise of cloud computing, these interconnected systems that were able to update databases in real time. Well, that's now moved on to the getting things done part of the business. And it's being able to jump on a video conference and tackle a problem without having to pre-establish when that conference is going to be and, and set that up in a tool somewhere or be in that meeting room where we have the video conference unit set up. It's about just jumping in and getting it done. Uh, it's about doing real time on Jamboard so I can share my ideas and, and collaborate in real time. I can fix maybe something that somebody made a mistake on uh, you know, before I was trapped behind the video conference tool. Now I can just update that on my Jamboard. They see the impact on theirs. So it's about just increasing the acceleration of how you get things done. Now, of course, once you're doing this, you need to be able to do this everywhere. The way you drive these tools to be part of your culture is by making everybody enabled to use them no matter where they are, if they're at home, on the road, or anywhere else. And, and the fact is, employees are more and more remote as we go on. Uh, you know, we've sort of done the math, and by 2020, half of your workforce is going to be contributing remotely, whether that's on client sites or uh, you know, touching in from their vacations. Not something you want to do, but something more and more we have to do in this ever-connected world. So we need the tools to support that so that things don't go off the rails when we're not physically in the office. And that's really what we've tried to do with these uh, these conference tools, make them super easy to join from a browser or a tablet or a smartphone, make it as simple as tapping a URL to hop into the meeting, providing a dial-in code at no extra charge so that you can uh, dial into the meeting through a phone as part of our enterprise edition, and then tying that all into the calendaring tool so that when I book a room, I go in there, the, the meeting's already in that room, anybody added to the calendar gets access to the meeting, gets access to the content that's part of that meeting. Really just trying to make it as easy as possible and, and as beneficial for all your users. We worked with the Wyoming Medical Center and they leverage this technology to reach out to their clinicians in remote areas, connect those to neurosurgeons and cardiologists and allow them to spread knowledge way beyond the walls of their organization. No longer did they have to bring them in for kind of knowledge transfer sessions. In the moment when they needed the answer, they could jump on a hangout right from their mobile phone and be connected to these experts. And that's really what it takes, having a suite of tools that's good on the go, but also in the boardroom bridges that gap between remote and on location. So with all these tools in place, we've got everybody collaborating and working together. They're productive no matter where they are. The result is this idea of, of consensus. But what we found was when we got the video conferencing so successful at Google, we'd left behind the whiteboard. And the whiteboard had become this broken tool. It worked great for the people in the room, still worked like it just did, pick up the marker and go. But for somebody remote on the video conference, they'd have to play the broken telephone game to get that picture corrected, or maybe just never got to add their ideas whatsoever. And you know, we tried hacking a solution. I'm sure everybody's done a few of these things, maybe taking a picture of the whiteboard and emailed that around to everybody, or pointed a camera from a video conference unit at the whiteboard. Hopefully those remote people could see my scratchy writing on the board. Or tried using docs and sheets, which are an outstanding form of collaboration, but are structured and kind of put you in a box and don't allow that freeform creativity of the Jamboard or of a whiteboard, I should say. Uh, and so that's why we built the Jamboard. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time building both the hardware and the software to make this a wonderful whiteboard-esque experience. It allows you to contribute anywhere the way you want and really engages your team to work better no matter where they're located. Uh, and, and the first thing you're going to notice, whiteboard's kind of a journey in my mind, you, you kind of walk up and the first thing you notice is how smooth it reacts to the marker, how much it feels like I actually picked up a marker and wrote on the board. But then you start to notice that this, this Jamboard does a lot more than my whiteboard used to. It corrects my writing when I write messy. It doesn't need to be taken a picture of or written do not erase because it auto saves every time I, I do something. It's tied to rich content so I can bring images out of a browser or from my drive. And it has machine learning to correct my crappy drawings and turn them into something a lot more appealing. It's connected together. So one Jamboard connects to another Jamboard. If I'm working with somebody on the other side of the continent, I can see what they're drawing in real time. They can see what I draw in real time. It works on mobile devices. So it doesn't matter how I'm connecting in, I'm still sharing that experience and ideating, never missing a creative moment. It works great with Hangouts. So if I have people that aren't near Jamboard, maybe don't use any Google applications whatsoever, they can click that Hangouts Meet link, jump into Hangout, 
see the Jamboard session, and provide their verbal feedback. So a great pairing of the Jamboard and the Hangouts meet. If they're paired in a room, they're going to work in sync to join the meeting together. And maybe most importantly, that connection to, to G Suite. So G Suite offers a lot of really great collaborative editors. We've added Jamboard to that mix. But we've also added those editors to Jamboard. So I can bring in a doc sheet or slide to my Jamboard session, start to annotate, add my notes, really collaborate around that content as well, kind of bridging that workflow gap. Lastly, I want to talk about the, the enterprise grade nature of this. And we spent a lot of time really focusing in on how to make these tools, the, the enterprise experience, not only the users needed, but that IT needed to manage and support them. And so uh, you know, we added a lot of enterprise grade functionality. Uh, we, we took advantage of Google's robust security posture and really took advantage of our scale as well. And let's start with the scale question. Um, you know, we ride on the same network and data center infrastructure as YouTube. So we're able to take advantage of that global scale to deliver high quality video conferencing around the world. We've integrated this with G Suite in a few different ways beyond just the, the integration I just talked about, but it begins with your calendar. So when I start calendaring something, it will suggest rooms for me based on the location of the users. Then it will automatically add a link into a Hangouts Meet session. It will automatically add that to the room I put it in, so I just have to tap and go. It really just makes that a, a seamless, frictionless experience for my users. When they walk into the room, the Jamboard will ask to join the meeting if it's paired with the device. If I decide to record that session, I tap a button and that's dropped into my drive for me later on. And all of that, the devices, the experience for the users, and the licensing is all managed inside of the admin console in the cloud so I can easily access and make changes in real time. Let's take a look at, at some of the hardware itself. So this is our, our Hangouts Meet hardware kit. It comes with four pieces, the Chrome box, which you see on the left there, a, a camera, depending on the size of your room. We'll talk about that in just a second. A speaker mic uh, and a uh, touch screen to control everything about the meeting. So this would be your in-room setup. And uh, let's just talk a bit about each one of those. This small Hudley camera is really powerful. It packs a big punch for a little camera. It has a wide field of view. It's ideal for the smaller rooms that you have. It'll capture everybody in the room. Not only that, it has onboard machine learning. So we put machine learning into the camera, which currently enables us to crop and, uh, and zoom to get the right perspective for the number of people in the room. And we'll empower even more machine learning as we move forward and, and develop this out further. We've also got a large uh, room kit as well that comes with a, a high quality PTZ Logitech camera, offers uh, 10x zoom in high HD and also a wide field of view there. The speaker mic took a lot of engineering and effort to create a state-of-the-art noise suppression and echo cancellation experience in the room, but also allows you to fully control the room from any one of the devices. You can daisy chain these together with a single cable to extend it out for large configurations. All the updates to this are passed down right from the Chrome box, so I don't even have to manage this. As we come up with better algorithms for that noise suppression, they're going to automatically get updated into that device. At the center of it all, though, is the touch screen. And um, this is a really great experience for your end users. You don't have to worry about how they connect into their meeting. They just walk in, tap their meeting on the calendar there. And that's what's happening. It's being fed from the calendar booking right in the room. I can see my meeting, tap and go. Want to record the meeting, I tap it once more. Want to call a phone, I can dial a phone number out from there, bring up the chat that's going on for the meeting, all sorts of functionality built right in there, easy for your users to engage in. We started a qualified peripherals program uh, recently to just increase the amount of customization you can do to your rooms, adding different cable sets, some different camera options, and really just trying to give you more options in terms of how you build out those more complex or unusual rooms that you're facing. On the Jamboard side, we spent a lot of time building out the, the quality of the screen so that the touch was really responsive, but also you get this big screen for a low price point. So that took a lot of the, the engineering effort was to make this an easily engageable, feel like a fluid whiteboard. But we also took some time and effort into the stylus to make sure you didn't have to have batteries in here so that nothing would get in the way of you hosting your meeting, running your meeting. All of this is managed, like I said, through that centralized administration console. So we're bringing that all into the Google Admin console where you manage your G Suite users today. And we're providing you with analytics that tell you things about your resource allocation and help you manage cost control as well. So now what I want to do is actually show you a little bit about the Jamboard and see what that experience is like. But just a, a quick reminder that these tools really 
do a few different things for your organization. First is to change the culture of how you guys work together. One of the phenomena I, I have at Google is when I've worked with somebody for, through a few video conferences and then I end up meeting them in person. And nine times out of 10, I forget that it's the first time I've actually met this person because the video conference experience feels so much like getting to know them. It just creates a tighter work relationship. Changing that culture of your organization is, a, is one of the uh, top benefits that you get from using the Hangouts Meet and the, the Jamboard tools. But it also makes you productive any, everywhere. If you need to be remote for a day, you can easily still interact with your coworkers or your customers or your partners using Hangouts Meet as if you were in the same room. Those in, in together drive consensus, put your company on the same page, and it can all be managed through enterprise-grade tool set to make sure you're safe and secure and in compliance. So with that, let's uh, let's move to the Jamboard. Now, I'm, I'm kind of lucky today because I have an Android-enabled uh, laptop and I have a Jamboard here behind me. So you guys are going to see a couple of ways that I can interact with both devices at once. I'm going to jump into my Jamboard on the screen here so that you can kind of see what it's like when I'm editing and, and see some of the editing tools that are built into it uh, and all, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to do a little bit of drawing. On the left here, you probably can see I've got a whole uh, set of tools and I can kind of flip those around really easily. It gives me a lot of power to do different sort of interactions with the board. So I'm going to be using that a lot. I've also got my friendly undo, so if I ever mess anything up, I can just tap that a couple times and it takes me back to where I was. Now, I want to talk to you about the collaborative nature of Jamboard because to me that's the true power of this tool. Uh, the fact that it, it does the, the cool whiteboarding stuff is, is great and awesome, but really where it gets its legs in my mind is when it starts to be a collaborative tool. But you know, we designed it to be easy, and accessible. And what I mean by that is you shouldn't have to go through training to use a Jamboard. First time I saw a Jamboard actually was Bring Your Kids to Work Day. And it was amazing to watch these, these eight and, and nine year olds run up to the Jamboard, grab one of the stylus and start marking up the board right away, grabbing images off the web, putting funny mustaches on people. And it just showed me how easy and approachable this device was really from, and, uh, and also from anywhere. Because then when you start to connect the Jamboards together, you start to see that collaborative nature. Now you may have noticed that the Jamboard was fixing my writing as we went. That's part of the machine learning that's built into the tool. So I was using handwriting recognition to take my messy kind of doctor's writing and turn that into something legible for everybody to read. Really cool aspect of the Jamboard. But I also have a few other tools I want to show off just while we're here. I can lasso things. Each one of these is an object that I can then move around. In this case, I'm just going to kind of shrink that and put it up in the corner. So I have that ability to reconfigure the board very unlike a whiteboard, I don't have to race and redraw everything. I can just move things around. Same with this picture here in the middle. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. Now, like I said, I want to talk about the way to use Jamboard as a collaborative tool, as an extension of the collaboration you're doing in G Suite and other tools today. And really, when you see that sort of aspect of Jamboard best is when you bring a second Jamboard into the mix. So I've added a second picture of my Jamboard there on the screen. And if you notice behind me, you can see in real time, the Jamboard's updating what's going on. And so when I have two Jamboards together, I can connect them and I begin to mirror what's happening on one Jamboard with the other. So that means that if I'm uh, on one coast and I'm working with somebody uh, maybe out in, in California, I'm in New York today, I can share ideas. So maybe I'm drawing the next great idea for Google on the board. They can jump in, add their ideas, extend my idea, correct my idea, and really turn this into a reality. Now you may see on the bottom of the screen right now, the machine learning is trying to process and figure out what it is I was actually drawing. It shows a light bulb. I can just tap that picture on the bottom, and it's now fixed up my messy drawing and again made it more legible. I'm a little surprised it even thought that was a light bulb because it was very terrible. But you can see the power of the machine learning to just take an unrecognizable kind of chicken scratch and turn it into something impactful. So like I said, the power of the Jamboards is when you connect them together. But what if you're not in a room with a Jamboard? What if you're on the road somewhere? Well, we've provided a complete toolkit of applications. So I might want to use that on my mobile device, my phone, or a tablet. Or maybe I'm going to be connecting via my laptop. Let's take a look at each one of those use cases a little bit separately. So with the phone, it's maybe not the ideal space to drawing. It's a little tricky, uh, limited real estate. 
but it is a great place to ideate still. I can still see everything that's going on on the Jamboard right from my phone. And I do have the ability to also add content to the Jam session. And one of the ways that I like best is by leveraging sticky notes. And um, a very popular way of solving problems today is called human-oriented design. And it leverages sticky notes very intensely. You kind of uh, place them on quadrants and prioritize problems. And so if I have a great idea, I can just type that on my sticky note and add that right into the Jam session. And now I have another asset on the screen, which is my sticky note. And let's just put that down there. And I'll kind of show it just going to go right from my phone into that Jam session. And if you're familiar with human-oriented design, sometimes it's a little bit of a challenge to get everybody together for that session or to get everybody in front of the board because maybe some people are a little shy or there's just too much going on. This allows me to use my phone as that mechanism for participating in the Jam session. Really powerful way of extending that. Now on my tablet, I have even more functionality. So the tablet actually does everything that my Jamboard does in the palm of my hands. And so I'm able to put content onto the Jamboard, but also see what's going on. I basically have a miniature Jamboard. And not only that, but I actually don't even need the Jamboard at all. I can have a Jam session directly with somebody on a mobile device, maybe another tablet or a phone, and I can even push stuff out to somebody on a laptop. On the laptop, I can use the Jam Viewer to see what's going on in the Jam session. I can also join maybe a video conference and share my screen to share that Jam out that way. Now, since we're talking about sharing our Jam sessions, let's add a little bit more content. And this is where the rich media starts to come into play. I've got a couple tools here on the left-hand side that allow me to grab images from the web. I'm going to grab a picture of the Hangouts logo. And I can just use that image browser to drag images right onto the screen. So there, I've just dragged that Hangouts logo onto my Jam session. But I also have a regular web browser. Let's look up Hangouts Meet Hardware. Tap that link there. It takes me to the web page. I could scroll down, maybe crop out a piece of that web page for marking up and annotating. Now I have that on there. Just position these a little bit. And so like I said before, Hangouts Meet and Jamboard are great partners together. From I can join any Meet as a participant right from the, the Jamboard. So that means I can share my screen in, I can share video into the Hangout. I can really participate in that Hangout remotely right from the Jamboard, but more importantly, I can share that ideation and that creation with any other users. Obviously, these two can uh, connect as well. And it just brings everyone together onto the same page in the same room. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about G Suite integration. I can bring up my Google Docs sheets and slides in Drive, go into a folder, maybe grab a document I want to work on, put it down there in the corner. Then I just double tap that document and I can drag pages off. I'm going to grab the front page and then let's just get rid of this piece here. And notice I can just drag stuff down to the bottom to get rid of it. So I've dragged a page out of my doc and I can use that to add to my Jam session right from my phone or from a tablet. And we've used mobile devices quite intelligently to act as a second factor authentication to ensure that you don't accidentally leave your drive open on a, a Jam session and walk away from the Jam board. So think of that device as a way of securing your content personally to you. So I grab my lasso here. Let's just select everything on the board and shrink it down a little bit. Because the other factor I want to point out is that all of this stuff is stored in the cloud. And that means a few things. First, it means I get to take advantage of all the sharing built into Google. Right? I could can add people to my jam, remove people, and really control the access to that. It also means I get autosave. Every time I interact with the board, and oh, and you see, got my 
messy writing wrong there, rarely does that. I can just stroke that out, rewrite it, or even correct individual letters if I want. But the point I was trying to make there was I get the autosave functionality. Every interaction I have with the Jamboard automatically saved to the cloud. I don't have to take a picture of that anymore. I also get unlimited space. That means that if I run out of space on one jam, I can just pop open the top there, create a new tile, maybe drag some content there, and begin my next session. So hopefully you saw a little bit about how the Jamboard comes together. I'll show you on here. See how it connects people, allows you to create with partners in real time, and really how it brings that whiteboard into the, the video conference sort of digital generation. Um, that's really all I wanted to, to go over with you guys today, but uh, we're going to move to the Q&A session. I, I know you guys have been asking questions throughout the, the uh, session. So we're going to take a minute, just kind of gather those up, and then I'll be right back to answer a few of those. All right, and we're back for the Q&A session. Uh, so I've got a few questions here coming in from my team that have been looking at your questions on the platform. I'm just going to uh, answer them right from the board here. And so uh, first question I'm going to grab here is, what if I want to share my Jam session? Uh, we've taken advantage of the sharing mechanisms within Google. So it uses the exact same sharing paradigms. I simply pop open this side panel. I can add people to the Jam session, remove people if I wanted to. Uh, if I want to get rid of Chris here, I just hit the X and I could add anyone else. We also have the ability to join Jamboard to Jamboard just using this little short code. So that's another way you could add people in effect if they were in front of a Jamboard like that. So great question. Thank you. Uh, is the Jamboard available in European markets? Yes, it is. Uh, we have launched, we launched in uh, the UK uh, last year. We've recently announced our launch within uh, Denmark, France, uh, the Netherlands, Spain, uh, and the Nordics. So Sweden, Finland, and I think I said, did I miss one there? Norway. Thank you. Uh, so the answer to that. More to come on that in the future as well. 
Uh, how can Hangouts Meet and Jamboard work together? So Hangouts Meet is basically accessible right from that same side panel. So I could connect into a meeting. I just use the 10 digit code. And notice there's actually, you probably can't see it out there, but there's a little camera here. There's a mic built into the board. So I could actually participate in a Hangouts Meet right from the board using this camera or with this little toggle, I can present what's on the Jamboard into the Meet there. Really easy to use, should be familiar to any uh, Hangouts Meet user when they get on the Jamboard. Uh, let's take this one. Is there a record and playback feature? Very commonly asked for feature request. Uh, you know, we're working on this one and it definitely will be coming down the road. But right now, the kind of workaround is to join a meet session and then record that way. And you can see how the ideas came to, uh, to pass or came to into creation. Uh, let's see here. When will we be able to interact and modify Jam on the Chrome browser? That is a coming soon as well. Uh, we're diligently working on this one. This is probably the number one request we've gotten. And um, you know, there's some some logic behind this. Uh, we just felt that this wasn't the way to draw. If anybody's tried to draw with the mouse, it is not the type of user experience that really works out for people. So we intentionally went for things that could take advantage of a stylus or could at least support better drawing. And we felt the phone and the tablet were the right devices for that. The phone for the, um, the sticky noting and the tablet for finger drawing and, and that sort of thing. We are going to be uh, releasing a, an editor for the browser. We want to make sure we do that in the right way that takes advantage of the form factor that is a laptop or desktop computer. Uh, can the Jamboard app work without a Jamboard hardware, i.e. app on an app tablet to tablet? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we initially thought, hey, this is just going to be a tablet application. We built the whole Jamboard application, and every single person was saying, I wish this was bigger. And so it led us to build the Jamboard because we kind of needed that as a companion to the tablet. So uh, this was the first use case. It absolutely works tablet to tablet, phone to phone, or, or however you want to uh, connect and ideate. Uh, are there simple ways to connect multiple people to the jam at once? I kind of showed this a little bit, but I just want to reiterate a couple things because there's multiple ways to connect jams. And um, I showed a couple here. So I have the idea to, or the ability, I mean, to join or start a broadcast, which means that I can basically just give another Jamboard user a code. They can tap that into their jam session and, and get that mirroring going. I can add people so they'll now have the ability to jump into the jam. But also right from my phone, I can actually locate nearby boards and throw my jam onto that board from my phone. So just using a Bluetooth connection, I'm able to throw a jam that I have onto the board. It will just ask for a little acceptance and away I go. Uh, how often does Hangouts meet hardware update? Is that a manual update? It is definitely not a manual update. I do not know the frequency of the update, so I'll have to uh, uh, follow up on that. Um, if somebody on my answer crew knows, I can just throw a sticky note up. But, um, but it does update over the air. So we push out the updates to the devices themselves. And one of the really powerful elements of that is it also includes qualified peripherals. So if you, your speaker mic needs updated with firmware, we can push that right into the Chrome box and right through the wire to that speaker mic, meaning you don't have to take care of anything. You just let that work on its own. Uh, am I able to use any of the existing equipment with HMH? Uh, so this is kind of a case-by-case -case basis. It's hard to kind of give a, an overall overarching uh, answer. We would recommend using it with the equipment that, that it comes with. Uh, but we found that a lot of speakers and, and, um, and mics and even cameras will work with the, the kits. You just kind of have to try that out yourself and see if it works. But in many cases, you're able to swap in different devices. And we are working diligently to expand that qualified peripherals program to include and encompass more options that way. Last one, is there a demo or trial period for HMH? Well, there's a couple things I'd say to this. Uh, we don't have an official uh, trial or demo program at, at Google uh, at this time. Um, it's something we've discussed and are, are working on and, and thinking about. But uh, definitely reach out to your account executive and, and we can uh, discuss what, what the options are. But the nice thing about HMH is you don't actually need anything more than a browser or a mobile device to try out the experience. So you can try this without all the hardware, see if it works for you as, uh, sort of based on the functionality, and then decide if the hardware is some direction you want to go in. So that's it for the questions. Uh, really appreciate everybody taking the time today to, to join us. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Cloud On Air. Um,
Please remember, we're hosting these live every Tuesday. Hopefully, you can join next week. Like I said, check the uh, agenda. There's a whole bunch of different topics. You'll definitely find something of interest to you. Thanks again. Take care.